Coming up, college grads are entering a job market that is suddenly turned upside down. I'll teach you how to turn stress into a strength. We'll take your calls and your chats. It starts right now. I'm coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how you can get there. You were created to fill a unique role through your work. That means you are incredibly valuable, you are needed, and it means you must do it. There is a duty, a responsibility for you to be you. Somebody out there needs you. And so that's what we talk about here on the Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled to have you with us. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. If you want to fire your question to the chat room, it's right there beside the window as you're watching right now. And you can do that now. Go ahead and shoot those to us. And uh, we will get those uh, uh, assimilated and to my computer here on the desk. Also, while you're watching, if you enjoy the program and and this is maybe your second or third time or you've been here for a while watching the show, give us a thumbs up right there below uh, the video window. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That tells YouTube, hey, there's something really happening here. And we know that that's the case. We see the view numbers are going up. The amount of time people are watching is going up. Subscribers are going up. And we're grateful for that because this is a conversation that needs to happen. If you think about YouTube and how uh, this is the, you know, the largest search engine in the world now, I believe that's the case. Uh, if it's not, it's just barely behind Google. And so many people are here from all around the world. And they're all trying to answer that question whether they realize it or not, the question being, why am I here? What should I do with my life? And that's why we're here. And we want to engage as many people as possible. So those of you who enjoy the show and who are uh, consistently partaking of it, if you subscribe and you share it and you like each episode as you're watching, whether it be live right now or on demand, that helps us. So thank you for considering that. And big thanks if you have done that and if you will do that. The pandemic class. USA Today is referring to college graduates who are about ready to enter the job market as the pandemic class. I want you to think about this. The 2019 college graduate class entered a tight labor market with 3.7% unemployment. The numbers as of today, 26 million people are unemployed and folks the numbers actually higher because we know that many states if not every state's unemployment offices are being overwhelmed and so the response time to filing those claims and helping those claims become a reality and then reporting that to the Department of Labor it's just not accurate so that number is is excruciatingly painful as this is for me to say the number's higher than 26 million And so what about these college grads that are heading into this very, very different market? Understand, we're not in a depression. We haven't even seen real numbers uh, for long enough to call this a recession. Are we going to go into a recession? It's highly likely. But what economists are calling this unique economic situation, they're calling it a suppression, a deliberate slowing designed to limit, obviously, the coronavirus. Now, so we're seeing states come online at the end of this month. We'll see more states join that. What's the recovery going to look like? Is it going to look like a V? Is it going to look like a U? Is it going to look like a W? Here's the deal. Uh, I love weather forecasters. We all look at it. It's important information. But at the end of the day, we know they're, they're trying to make a prediction based on what they see. Same thing with economists. The point I'm making, nobody really knows. But here's the deal. If you've got a college graduate in your house, this is what I want to point out. It is a very, very different time to be looking for a job. But understand that you don't need to be worried about the long term if the long term goal, the long term industry doesn't have a ton of opportunities right now. Don't be discouraged by this. Just realize, hey, I'm just getting started. This is not a normal environment. So I shouldn't have normal expectations. So for many of these college graduates, 
a short-term strategy is the right way to go. There are there are some and, and maybe a good amount that can move right into their industry. But I want those of you who have influence over college grads that are coming into this really different job market to give them the right perspective. Here's what we know. Online retailers, pharmaceutical companies, tech companies, they're advertising new positions. So there are industries that are growing, not just thriving, but growing, expanding in this unique economic environment. There is a labor market analytics firm that has a great job postings dashboard. It's called MSI, E-M-S-I. It's very helpful for the students in your life that are trying to track opportunities across regions and industries. And, and if you can get a tech job and you don't have the tech skills, you're coming right out of school, get online and get certified. There are things you can do to add some skills that will now make you employable. But right now, if it's just, hey, I'm working two or three part-time jobs, I'm making some money, I'm just biding my time, that's okay too. Don't get discouraged. Get diligent. Be diligent to do what you can to set yourself up for the long haul. This too shall pass. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577. Remember, throw your chat questions in here. We'll get to those momentarily, but we're going to start it off with Angela, who is joining us in Ambler, Pennsylvania. Angela, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? Angela, I'm living the dream. What's going on with you? So I recently found myself unemployed because of COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not fresh out of college. I'm older. And I guess my question is, for, about four years ago, I left a job that I did enjoy and I did like. And I left because of outside influences and people telling me to move on because there was management changes coming and you need to go and get out while you can. And since that time, I've job hopped a lot because I haven't found yeah. anywhere where I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to that company um, and I'm not sure how to open that door. I've sent an email to the CEO who I had a good relationship with. He's just kind of, oh, okay, good to hear from you. So I'm wondering, how do you go, how do you go backwards? Yeah. Uh, interesting. How long ago was the email uh, dialogue? Uh, the email was done actually right before, it was in the beginning of March, and, they, and his answer to me was, you know, we're putting a hold on hiring in this area. I know that they have a job that's open in this area. It, it is a little bit above my skill set, mm-hmm. so I understand them not wanting to bring me in at that position, but there are other positions I know that they will be hiring for. Yeah, I, well, the good news is you know more than just the CEO, correct? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love that you know the CEO and can go direct to him. Um, I think you stay in touch with multiple people below him um, starting now. Just reach out and say, you know what? Here's the deal. I I, uh, I left. I had some influences that influenced me to leave. You don't have to unpack all of that because you don't want to create a bunch of questions. But but I would be as transparent as is uh I guess would be plausible and smart, you know, common sense. And I think you've got that common sense, but I'd be very transparent and vulnerable and say, you know what? I wish I never left and I want to come back. And, um, and so I know that, you know, um, right now we're in this weird time and you've got to freeze, but I, I just wanted to a, let you know that I want to come back. And, um, and that's my number one goal. And so I'm just reaching out to let you know, A, for you to keep your ear to the ground for positions that you think um, would, would be a good fit for me and, and for the company. And B, can you keep me posted on when things start to thaw out? When does the freeze stop? I wouldn't keep going to the CEO until that thaw happens. So to the extent that you've got some former coworkers who are true friends and acquaintances that can give you that information, the timing is everything. So I would reach okay. back out uh, to that CEO um, when the thaw is officially, you know, gone. So they've they've they thawed out. They're now opening positions and they're actively looking. By the way, I would also leverage those relationships and acquaintances in the building to help you get the interview. And then then the CEO is potentially maybe the cherry or the whipped cream on top of the sundae. You understand what I'm saying? Because you've got that relationship. Were you expecting that CEO to go, boom, we want you back. Yep, we'll take you right now. Or were you just hoping to kind of give him the FYI, I want to come back? 
No, I was hoping to, uh, my relationship, there's been a lot of turnover since I left, since the management did leave. Um, so I was, my relationship with him was actually very close. We, we worked very well together. We, it was more, I, I thought at, you know, at the time it was more of a, uh, we had a friendship. Oh, good. So my well. reaching out to him, um, the problem is that when I did leave, they offered me the world to stay. Um, oh. and he did everything he could to keep me there and I still left. Okay. Now, so I, okay. So this is different. Okay. Good, good, good. This yeah. is, so let me dive into this a little bit more then. Um, did you tell him about these outside influences when you left? I did not. Yeah. I think you have to, I think the fact that you just said you guys were that close, I didn't realize you were that close. So that leads me to believe he was hurt. That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, that's different. That's a different ball game. I'm so. Gosh, I wish I knew that. Uh, I'm not saying to to ignore the advice I just gave you. I still want you to reach out to your former friends and coworkers to get a lay of the land, because I think when this thing thaws, you're asking for a face to face meeting with him, and part of it is you're going to have to own what really happened, which is I left because I had some outside influences. To giving me bad advice and I wish I could tell you that I had the perspective that I now have I wish I could tell you that I should have uh, taken their concerns and allow you to address them so you didn't do that you never allowed him to address the concerns that these outside forces were putting in your ears am I right correct you're gonna have to own that because you hurt him okay he offered you the world and you went nope I'm out so, Very true. so this is a different kind of deal. You're going to have to, this is, do you know what this is? As weird as this, I hope this doesn't sound weird because it shouldn't sound weird. But Angela, this is, this was a breakup. And you broke up and you did it. And now you're coming back going, I want to, I want to get back into relationship. <laughs> I mean, it's the same deal. And he's going, why I, you hurt me. I offered you the world and you didn't want to be there. Now what's changed. You got to tell him what's changed. You got to tell him what clouded your judgment and you better tell him what you learned from it too. Cause see, it's okay. not enough for you to say you were wrong. It's not enough for you to say why you're wrong. You have to say both of those things. I was wrong. Here's why I was wrong. You got to own it 100%. Are you tracking with me so far? I am. And then you got to go, but here's what I've learned. And now I'm a better person and I've learned and, and, and I want to come back and I'm asking you to forgive me for my judgment. But my judgment was because I was, I was allowing other forces to influence me. Here's how that's never going to happen again. Here's what I've learned from that situation. And I'm asking, number one, for your forgiveness. And number two, I'm asking for you to consider, do you believe me? And do you, do you have trust in our previous relationship and the friendship that was there? And, and not just forgive me, will you consider letting me come back and making it up to you in this company? I think that's the only way you get back in. So okay. um, I, 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 I would reach out to the acquaintances and team members for the right timing. So you're not bugging him on that. And then when the timing is right, where his brain is back into some type of normal mode, I think that's when you ask for the meeting with him. Okay. And don't make it job related. Say, hey, can I just meet with you? I, I owe you a big apology and I want to do it in person. Okay. Don't you think that's the best way to go about this? Yeah, I, I just didn't know how to go about it. I mean, I sent an email saying, you know, hey, I've looked at, you know, it's taken me a couple of years. I've worked other places. It's helped me to appreciate you and your company and what you yeah. offered me and That's not enough. where I want to be. It's not enough. It's like saying, hey, I know I broke up with you and I went and dated a bunch of other dudes and now I realize <laughs> what I'm, what I was missing. That's nice, but that's not, that's not the, it, this is face to face. I blew it. I hurt you. I hurt other people in the company, but I want you to know there was no malice. Okay. I just got bad advice that, and, and from people that I trust. I think that's fair. I think that's a very, I think that's fair, but you're going to have to own it. Completely 100% own it. 844 747 2577. Angel, thank you for the call. Thank you for the transparency. Folks, that's what I love about this program. 
is uh, I want to create a safe place for you to be vulnerable and transparent. Let's talk through this stuff. Um, I, I, I want to be your sounding board and uh, Angela, I think, has got a bright, bright future there. And and let me just, one other little point there on the advice that I gave Angela. Well, I've had to do that before. And can I tell you, it's not fun. It's not easy. But boy, oh boy, is it the right thing to do every time. People appreciate it. I'm not going to guarantee you that she's going to get back in there. And I'm not going to guarantee you that when you own your stuff, and and you 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 do what we just discussed. I'm not guaranteeing you that it's going to uh, get you back to where you were before, but it is still the right thing, and it will allow you to heal, allow them to heal, allow both parties to move forward. Whether or not the end result is exactly what you want it to be, relationally and then emotionally for both parties, it's always the right thing to do. Eight four four seven four seven two five seven seven. Let's go to Rachel in Des Moines, Iowa. Rachel, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm happy to, Rachel. What's going on? Well, I am in college right now, about to finish up my degree to be a secondary English teacher. Mm-hmm. But I'm starting to second guess my sweet spot. Oh. I was wondering if you could help me through that. Yeah, I love this. Okay, what do you, what do you what is it what is it at this point that you're second guessing? What's the sweet spot? So my my sweet spot is um, my passion is about you know reading, writing, learning, um, helping someone find the truth, and just seeing them learn something for the first time. Uh huh. And my my skills, or sorry, my strengths are also in the communication skills. I'm good at making abstract concepts, understandable. Um, I'm good at making things relevant to kids. Okay. Um, okay. But and, the reason I'm second guessing it, uh-huh. if you want me to go on. Yeah, I do. Um, so I, right now I actually work at a youth shelter and residential treatment facility. And with the COVID craziness going on, I actually assumed the role of a substitute teacher. Because it's a closed campus, the teachers aren't allowed to show up, but the kids still have to be in the classroom every day. So rather than just putting kids in front of video games for months on end, we had to figure out how to make this work. Mm -hmm. And it's just been kind of chaos, and it really hasn't been very fulfilling. Yeah. I'm like, did I did I get this wrong? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I'm laughing is is because I know exactly what you're dealing with. Um, because your 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 new your new or your let's say it this way, your current context is so diametrically opposed to the context of the future. So you're going, whoa, wait a second, and I just don't think that you can connect the two because you can't you can't take this future idea that you had which by the way just for fun take 20 seconds and describe not your current context because you just gave us that describe the future context that you thought that you wanted to step into and quite frankly you still do but this thing has thrown you a curveball describe what that day would look like in the future that you were dreaming about so that that day would look kind of like the few student teaching opportunities I've had. Yeah. I have had the opportunity to teach two lessons. The kids listened. They were respectful. We were able to get things done. Yeah. Um, but it was also on the shoulders of, you know, the classroom teacher who already had, you know, those disciplinary measures in place. No, but, but that doesn't matter. That no, is my but, vision. Okay, good. <laughs> and so, so do you think that vision is gone forever? It's not possible? You know, I'm really not sure. I can't decide if it's craziness of the situation or if it is me. Um, well, no, no, you didn't answer my question. I, I appreciate what you just said, but you're you're pivot you're, you're you're sidestepping my question. I don't know if you're doing it on purpose or if it's it's where your head's at. I think it's the latter. So let me ask you the question again. Do you think that that future? based on a couple of student teaching experiences, plus what you know to be true as a student yourself. Do you think that that type of classroom environment is gone forever, that that's not going to be an option? No, I guess not. It's still out there. Of course. So I, I guess but the point I'm making is you're having doubts 
about the future in a space because you're in a very different context and current environment that you go, there's no way I could keep this up. That's what you're really feeling, correct? Yeah. Good news. You're not going to have to keep this up. This is a really different environment, and that's not the environment you have to choose. Let me push you on something else. You may have thought, well, secondary education in a classroom is what I wanted to do, but you may find as you get into a normal uh, experience, like you just described in your student teaching and what you know to be true, that you can get in a normal classroom environment where the students want to be there and there's discipline and, and you're seeing results. You may find, though, that when you get into that normal situation that you find, well, it's not secondary teaching. Maybe it's on the college level, or maybe I want to train uh, in corporate training. I want to instruct more in a, a corporate setting. I don't know where it's going to go for you, but when you laid out what you do best, talent, and what you love to do the most, passion, I don't see any confusion on the sweet spot at all. But you're young, you're still in college, and as you get out into the teaching profession, that word that I would choose for you, you could pick your own one word to describe your role in your sweet spot. I think it's instructor right now. That's the word I'd use. But an instructor is an instructor. The question becomes, what do you most want to instruct? That's topic. Who do you most want to instruct? That's student. So as you get out into the world of professional teaching slash instructing, I think you'll be able to adapt and move and switch, but you're still in your sweet spot. But you being an instructor, without question, it, it's there. As you gave me the the answers, I know you're giving me the truth. How does that... That makes sense. Does it make sense? So I don't want you to be mm -hmm. discouraged about your future because you're, you're feeling this, ugh. That's what you're feeling right now. You're going, oh boy, this is not what I had in mind. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah, but you chose to do this as well. You don't have to keep doing this. You're still in college. So don't don't let your distaste turn into confusion when I don't think confusion needs to be there at all. I, I hope what I just gave you was real clarity. Is that where you are? Yes, that does make things much more clear. I appreciate that. All right. You still got a little bit of doubt? I can hear it in your voice. <laughs> let's have, let's have, you know, hold on. I'm going to stay with you for a little bit. It's my show. I can do whatever I want to. I, to the best of my ability, I want you walking away from this phone call with some confidence. I can still hear the doubt in your voice. Am I right or am I wrong? If I'm wrong, I let you go. If I'm right, I got an idea I want to dig into. You know, you, you're right a little bit because I find myself um, losing a little bit of confidence in the culture. If I know I can be in a place where I can have a little bit of control, yeah. um, I know I'll be good. Okay. But, um, but there you're are one, also some districts who yeah. are really given their teachers. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask there, you this. So where do you know that you could have control? Think about it. There so, are a couple districts I know of, so I guess that's your proximity principle yes. is figuring where that is. Yes, but I want to push you. I don't think you're thinking big enough. You're thinking public school only, am I right? Um, that's where my mind goes, but I would be willing to, you know, do private. Sure request. you would. Sure you would. Are you telling me right now, Rachel, if I made a couple phone calls for you, a couple really nice private schools in, in, in Iowa or your surrounding area, or quite frankly here in Nashville, if you're willing to move anywhere in the country? And I said, let me tell you about Rachel. Rachel's awesome. And a private school offers you a great teaching job and you knew the discipline was there, they don't tolerate that mess. They, they don't have the kind of restrictions on discipline and behavior that public schools have. Or let's say that eventually you moved into the university level where people are paying a lot of money and they want to be there. You're telling me that you wouldn't take those opportunities to have that kind of control and a student who's excited about learning? You're telling me that's not attractive to you? I want to do that in a heartbeat. Okay, then. All right, now we got her where we... <laughs> okay, now I can let you go, Rachel, because you are thinking too hard and you are thinking about limitations instead of possibilities. Think about all the possibilities, not the limitations. Let me tell you something. 
That's what it is, folks. That's why I hung in there a little bit longer with her. When you think about limitations, you're full of doubt. Think about that. If all I ever see are, well, I'm limited here, I'm limited here, I'm limited here, I'm limited here, well, you're going to doubt everything. But when you think about possibilities, what changes? I go from being doubtful to optimistic, which ultimately leads to the confidence for her. So we have to walk her through this where she goes, oh, I do that in a heartbeat. Boom. That's what she needs to be focused on. All right. We got we to gotta get going because I'm really excited about today's teaching. How to turn stress into strength. Going to get to that in a moment. I want to get to the chat room real quick. Uh, Mary W., I will be getting an inheritance of approximately $15,000, but my husband and I have $78,000 plus mortgage in debt. So let's just say the $78,000. We'll, we'll forget about mortgage for the moment. I want to use the $1,700. I want to use $1,700 for the Financial Coach Master's training and the rest for debt. Is that okay? The coaching would be a side job until debt free. Then my main job. Yeah, I like that. You're getting the inheritance. So this is this is new money. And you're taking $1,700 that you'll invest in cash to get you going on a side hustle. And that gives you even more motivation now that you know you're equipped to make more money and you're training people on what you're going through. So yeah, I love that. Put the rest on debt. Uh, Ryan, I'm at a job where I feel I was just hired on to make up a void and it wasn't really what I want to do. I have a job in mind that I want, but I feel like I don't have any support. Well, I, I hate, Ryan, that you don't feel supported. And, and I don't know because this is in the chat. I don't know if this is family or friends, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go back to what you just said. I have a job in mind that I want to do. Then get after it. You're not living someone else's life. You're living your life. Also, you are heavily influenced, as we all are, by friends and family. And so if you've got some friends and family saying, I don't think this is a good idea, you can listen to what they're saying and understand why they're saying it. Are they saying it because they're trying to protect you? Are you saying, well, I'm just going to leave this job now? And they're saying, don't leave it until you have something else. And I would agree with them. But if they're saying, no, you got a stable job, why wouldn't you like that job? I wouldn't listen to them. You got to do what you want to do. So hang in the current job. It's your stability. Start making plans, making connections to get hired. Go get my get hired guys at KenColeman.com. You got the resume guide, the interview guide, and the follow-up guide. Go get that right now. It's free. KenColeman.com. Do what I tell you to do. Make the connections, get the job. When you get the job, say, I'm out to the day job. And that's what you need to do. Uh, let's do one more uh, chat here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Lifestyle with Kate. As an entrepreneur that tried to start two previous businesses, the one I thought would be a dream job didn't last long. Working on starting another one that I think is my dream job. How can I be sure I'm getting it right this time? Love this question. Uh, one thing I want you to do is write down as specifically as you can or type it out. I don't care which. But what did you do wrong? What did you do wrong? Where did you fail? And not for the purposes of beating yourself up, but actually to look into these things and go, where did I fail? Why did I fail? What did I learn from the failure? Specifically in the what did I learn from the failure? And maybe you haven't learned it yet, so that's why I want you to do this, is go back and go, what could I have done differently? Had I done this differently or this differently and this differently, would the outcome have been different? You've got to examine the failure before you start something else. I like that you're getting ready to start something else, and I wouldn't wait very long, but I would wait long enough to reflect and then after I've reflected on it, now I'm going to take what I've learned and I'm going to make sure that I apply that lesson or those lessons to this future endeavor. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is I want you to get Business Boutique. It's Christy Wright's best-selling book. She's a colleague. She's a part of our Ramsey Solutions family. And uh, this book will help you immensely. Uh, so go get that. 
consider uh, listening to her podcast, everything she's doing on the small business side of things, launching a side hustle. She does a lot of good work there, and I highly, highly recommend it, and I fully endorse it. 844-747-2577. Might get back to one other call here, but I want to get to uh, this teaching. uh, Because I read an article, I read a tremendous amount of information, and I was reading an article uh, from Angela Duckworth, She's the best-selling author of the book, Grit. I love everything Angela Duckworth does. Uh, Her book, Grit, is a must-read for everybody. You want to talk about a book that I recommend that everybody read? It's Grit. Anyway, um, so follow her on Twitter. And so I was perusing some articles. And uh, she uh, promoted this article, The Other Side of Stress, by a friend of hers, Aaliyah Crumb. And uh, I'm not going to read the article. I'm just going to pull out a couple things here because I think it's absolutely spot on and, and I think you need to hear it. Uh, so this this lady, Aaliyah, her friend, recently, uh, because of this coronavirus pandemic, uh, her whole world got thrown upside down like many of you. Basically, she uh, her toddler's daycare was closing. And she uh, is, a, is an educator and a researcher and she has to teach two classes and she runs a research lab. And a single parent, how's she going to care for her 18-month-old daughter? No, that's a real situation. You're talking about stress. Whoa. All right. So uh, she she said it was just really upsetting. And then uh, she she got quiet. And she goes, you know, I've, I've spent the last 15 years studying stress. So here's a lady who has studied stress for 15 years. She's a thought leader on it. She's an expert on it. And now she's in a very stressful situation. And she said, I reminded myself what I've learned from research. Severe stress can make you stronger. But how? Here's a word that she uses that you hear me talk about all the time on this program. Mindset. So she gives three key things. I just want to give you this quickly. This is so good. Number one, acknowledge your stress. Acknowledge your stress. This is just simply saying, you know what? I'm stressed out. It's real. And here's why it's real. It's a hardship. She's now in a situation where her whole rhythm and routine has been changed. And she's got to take care of her 18-month-old daughter who matters deeply to her. But she's got to also balance her teaching, which means a lot to her, and then run a research center, which is helping people. It matters deeply to her, all three things. And this whole thing has been thrown at her and now she's got to figure out how to make all these changes work. It's real. The hardship's real. That's what she's saying. Second, she says, own the stress. Don't feel guilty about it. Don't try to avoid it. Don't, you know, try to just, you know, uh, numb yourself to it. Welcome it. Here's why. She says, it'll help you connect to your values. The reason you feel stress is because it's related to something deeply important to you. And I just outlined those three things, how important those things were to her. Now, third, she says, use the stress. Channel your time and energy into tasks that are aligned with your values. So what she did was, she just said, you know what? This is a crisis situation. It's going to give me new opportunities to apply my research in different ways. It's going to... Give me an opportunity to spend more time with my child and also adapt how I teach my class. So what she simply said was, I'm going to use the stress and all the things that were creating the stress, I'm now going to lean into the stress and go, well, you know what? This is just forcing me to approach the things I value the most in a different way, in a deeper way. That's the mindset change. That's unbelievably great. So she says, don't stress about the stress. Do adopt a stress is enhancing mindset. Gives you an opportunity to change and change in a good way. I love that. You know what that essentially is? That's the victor mindset versus the victim mindset. All right. I'm stressed out. Why am I stressed out? Because of this and this and this. This cause has created these effects in my life. Stressful. All right. This sucks. All right. Okay. Going to have to make some changes. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm going to be a victor. I'm going to step into the stress. And as a result, it's going to make me stronger. 
It's going to make me stronger. So, when you're stressed, take that three-point approach. Share that with other people in your life that are stressed out right now. I think what we're going to see is a stronger you and a stronger them. 844-747-2577. Um, I did not mention this earlier. I'm really proud of the resources that our team is putting out. I mentioned the the Get Hired guides at KenColeman.com. These are free. Uh, we're working on some stuff right now to take this to the masses. I'd love for you to be my army. My army of, hey, uh, I listen to this guy. I watch this guy. Uh, he's got some great free resources to get people ready to get hired. A lot of people got displaced, and they and, and it's been a while since they've had to get hired. Uh, or some people got displaced, and they're going, I'm not going to go back where I was. I'm going to go somewhere else. I want to make sure that I get in. Those Get Hired guys are going to become, oh, they already are great resources, but they're going to become very valuable. However, there's one other thing the team has done. My number one best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, and, and the irony's not lost on me that it's all about connecting with people, and the way you connect with people has been severely disrupted. But you can use The Proximity Principle whether or not you're in person over coffee or lunch. You can still connect, as we now know, online. So, Here's what the team has done. I'm really proud of this. And by the way, if you're new to the program, you're going, Ken, what's the proximity principle? I'm glad you asked. It simply says this, and it came out of this show. The proximity principle says, in order to do what I want to do, and that's where you insert career, the job, the role that you long for. In order to do what you want to do, you've got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. Right, So this idea that I, I, I've got to be around people who are in the profession, in the role that I want to be in, and then I got to be in companies or sectors uh, or gatherings, whether it be online or when we get back to trade shows or conferences or whatever, I got to be in those places, podcasts, YouTube channels, books. I got to be in the places where the craft, the industry, the work is happening. Why? Because the right people plus the right places. So you putting yourself around the right people and in the right places, here's what's happening. That intentionality will lead to opportunity. Knocks on your door. It's like being at a train station. If you're around the right people in the right places, here's what I know. You stay there, your train's coming. It comes to you. This idea of wandering aimlessly, trying to get lucky to find your place in the world is nonsense. It's not how it works. So that's the proximity principle. It, it, it became something that I shared on the show and when it was relevant to callers, I'd say, boom, use the proximity principle. Here's how it works. And then it became a book, number one best-selling book. And so here's what the team has done. All formats of the book, the hard copy, the audio book read to you by me and the ebook are all on sale. And there's a free study guide that comes with it. The hard copy of the book is $10. That's crazy. $10. That's less than you can give it on Amazon, Joe. I didn't realize that. I'm starting to go, boy, that's a big discount. I'm kidding. I'm very excited about this. $10 for the hard copy. The ebook is $8. And the audiobook is $3.99. Oh, my goodness. The only place you get these deals is at KenColeman.com. Now, it's a limited time, but this is a great graduation gift. This is a great, hey, you're going to get out of this for a friend who's in a tough time here and when it's time to get out of it, when you get the chance to go back to work, this is how you get there. I'm so excited about this. This is poised to help a lot of people. Unbelievable deal right now. Go get it, KenColeman.com. All right, there it is, Joe. Unbelievable deal. Hey, uh, I got to go. But before I do, I want you to know, you matter. You do have what it takes. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.